My name is Tracy and I'm here to share with you what my family and I have been going through the, for the past few weeks. Um, my husband and I, we have two children and our oldest son broke his collarbone four weeks ago and I want to share with you our experience of that and what we've done at home to help him heal and heal correctly so he's not going to have to have surgery to fix or to correct his collarbone. So I'm gonna share with you um, about his x-rays and what we experienced when we went to the doctor visits for his x-rays. I wanna to talk to you about the slings that we purchased for him, ways that I was able to help him with showering and hygiene, also to sleeping. I wanna give you some tips about that, um, just as far as sitting, correct sitting and standing techniques. Um, to help you have the best posture for you to, um, for your child to heal properly at home and hopefully your child will be able to avoid surgery. Now, this is just an informational video. I am not a medical provider in any means. So if you want to use anything that we have done or that I share with you about in this video, please make sure that you check with your physician or your medical provider before you do any of this at home because like I said, this is just informational purposes. This is not telling you what you should and should not do, okay? This is just what we did. Um, so um, when I got to school to pick up um, my son after his accident, I was very fortunate. I feel like it was a God thing. It was a miracle. I was able to go immediately and take him into a, uh, a Houston clinic, and I was able to see an orthopedic surgeon who specializes in shoulders. Shoulders is one of his main things, and he was able to see him immediately, and he looked at his first x-ray, and he said, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna heal without surgery, no problem. Now, let me remind you, he, my son is 15 years old and he is considered a pediatric patient. So if you're watching this and if you're considering what I'm telling you um, for an adult, an adult would probably be viewed differently by your doctor versus a pediatric patient whose bones are still growing and still developing. And I asked my child, I said, do you care if you're in my video and he said, you know, he didn't really care if I talked to you about the video, but he didn't necessarily want to be in the video. So I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of him and I may be able to get him in the video a little bit later. But anyway, just so you know. All right. So he broke the the day that he had the accident. We went immediately to the doctor and that is what we were told just to keep it in the sling. Um, we were probably told a lot of things that I don't remember because I was very addled when we were there at the doctor's office, we were very upset. He was in a lot of pain. Um, I was upset with him. It was very, very emotional. It was an emotional, um, it's been an emotional couple weeks, to be honest with you, from my perspective, because just worry. But um, that day was was really a challenging day. And so we were, at, so the doctor man told, told me some things and I may have forgotten them. But we did know that we, we had to keep the sling and he needed to keep his elbow near his side. So we went back for the second appointment um, one week following the accident. And so when we, so the joint, it looked, and I'll show, I'll show you the x-ray. I'll pop that up somewhere in here. So when we went back for the second appointment, the, the bone had slid, I believe it was the bottom bone. It had actually slid closer into um, the spine instead of, pulling back more like it should have. And so the doctor was very mildly, he didn't come across very concerned, but I got the impression that we needed to have a drastic change before week two um, to make sure we were not gonna have to have surgery. And so I was very troubled because I didn't want him to have to have surgery. That was one thing that the doctor mentioned. He said, I don't want to do surgery. He said, it will heal faster if we do surgery. However, you risk complications if you go in and have surgery. So after our first appoint, after that second week, after our second x-ray and the bone had not moved correctly, we were more intentional. We were able to I guess I did some more research. My aunt is a therapist. She gave me some really good advice. Um, one thing he had not done the first week was hold the shoulder back. He really kind of more favored it because it, it hurt. I mean, it did. And so he didn't, he let that shoulder roll forward in the sling 
more than he should have. So the second week we bought him, we didn't even discuss it with our daughter. We just ordered a figure eight sling. And I've got a picture of that. If he doesn't care, I'll put that up for you to see it. Um, we ordered the figure eight sling and he didn't wear it to school, but he did keep that on in the afternoon just to help him pull the shoulder back. He was more intentional to keep that shoulder back um, throughout the day at school. He would have to sit up like very um, at attention is um, how my aunt described it. Stay at attention, keep those shoulders back to help keep that bone pulled back instead of rolling forward. So that's something really important that you need to do. And you got to keep that elbow in. So I'm going to stand up a little bit. So he would keep his elbow in, shoulder back, and then he would occasionally drop that, hold it up here, and rest it to let that elbow rest a little bit. And even early on, I would help hold his arm up so he could let that, that arm fall a little bit so that he was moving that elbow to keep your elbow from freezing up. So a lot of things to consider. Um, sling, so we did order, and I wanna show you this. Um, I ordered for him off Amazon, just a very cheap, or inexpensive, it was 15 bucks or so. If I can get an affiliate link for it, I'll put it in there, but right now I don't have one. Um, but just a very basic sling, and he would put this on in the shower. And actually, then we went on a cruise earlier this week, and um, he wore this in the water. He just went and dipped, went in the ocean and dipped down and, and stood back up. He couldn't swim. But um, this was a good thing. Um, so talking about slings, moving on from, so, okay, wait, let me go back to x-rays. So we got, went to week, so after we went the first appointment, second appointment was when he said, okay, the bone is not moving correctly. So we went back um, two weeks after the procedure and the doctor was very pleased. He was like, this looks great. Um, you just need to keep what you're doing, keep holding your shoulder back. Um, and it should be fine. He said, come back in two weeks. So this was during the time we went on the cruise and um, we already had it booked. We couldn't get a refund. So we just, we went and he had a very good attitude about it. Um, even though he was handicapped and there was a lot of things that he couldn't do. Um, but we went back after our cruise um, and the doctor said that the bone was solid. He said it's solid, it's not gonna move. Um, he said, but you can't do anything dumb. You've got to be very careful. And then he said, at that point, the sling is more like to keep you from having a reflex and moving your bone in a way that you shouldn't move it. And also the sling is kind of like caution tape, you know, just to let everybody know when you're out in public, hey, I'm not well, don't mess with me kind of thing. So we are actually in that period. Um, we ha He has to keep the sling on for three more weeks just while that bone is continuing, like, because on the x-ray, it still looks broken, but the doctor and his trained eyes, he can see that it is a solid joint there. It just needs to continue to heal to become even more stable. So we're wearing the slings right now, and then after three, we go back in a month for our next appointment. Um, so anyway, about the sling. So we did get the sling from... Hang on, let me go get. So when we were when we were leaving the doctor's office, or the day that we were at there at the doctor's office, they provided us a sling. Or actually, my insurance paid for part of it. I had to pay twenty bucks, and um, it has two strap two two openings. This is actually his least favorite strap, and the reason why is because when he goes to put it on, because it has two, I mean, he's got one hand that he pretty much can't do anything with. So if he's got it in the strap here, it's very difficult to put both through at the same time, okay? Because remember, you got an injured hand here. So if he's at school and wanting to drop his arm to let it rest or what have you, this two, this thing right here, was not his favorite. He's actually not home right now. Um, and the one that he has, we were fortunate and we were able to borrow one from his um, athletic, um, from the school. Um, the one that they have, it's actually joined here and there's only one hook. So it's much easier for him to pick up and lace through and use. 
Um, so this is the one that we got for the shower. So it's really nice having three slings because I can wash one and then while it's drying, he has another one that he can wear. And then we have this one that was just for the shower because you have to be really careful. And this was something I didn't know until I researched it. Um, your collarbone is what holds your arm up. So when you take that sling off in the shower, if you don't have anything supporting your arm, then that's not good. Because the day I picked him up, he was holding his arm like this. Like he had, it's his right arm, that his right collarbone. And he was taking his left arm and he was holding it like this. So that's why in the shower, um, you know, it's good to have a second sling because you have one that you can get wet and one that you can, that can keep your arm stable. Um, and then a, a dry one that you can put on when you get out of the shower. Okay, so showering, um, he was like, Mama, don't, don't tell him about me showering. I'm like, I'm not going to give you, like, this isn't gross details. So he would leave his shorts on because he couldn't clean certain parts of his body with one hand. It was very difficult early on in this. It was hard to do anything the first several days, to be honest with you. Even brushing his teeth to bend over was painful. Like, he would take a cup and spit and rinse into a cup instead of having to bend over at the sink. It was very painful. Um, so in the shower, he would keep his shorts on, and we he had a stool that he would sit, sit on. He's 6'2". I can't reach him to wash his hair so he would sit down I would wash his hair for him rinse his hair help him get his um, armpit cleaned because obviously he can't use his right arm and doing this isn't very um, effective so I would help him with that and then I would give him the washcloth and then you have to leave your elbow near your side so that's kind of tricky so he would reach up under here and clean his armpit the best he could without moving that elbow out and then I would take, thankfully we have a shower head that has the hose on it. And I was, I was able to um, help him rinse this part, these parts of his body. And then um, I would leave the bathroom so he could finish up on his own. Um, and then thankfully he was able to, you know, dress, dress um, his lower half. He did have to have um, help with his shirts, obviously, because of the sling and the broken arm. Um, the daughter encouraged him to wear button-down shirts, um, but yeah, that thankfully we have some good stretchy shirts, and he was able to wear pullover shirts without any problems. Um, he did. I did look the shirts that he liked to sleep in. They had five percent. They were cotton with five percent spandex, so we could pull them up over the arm with the broken collarbone, and then stretch him over, over his head and then put his arm through there and then put the sling on. So that was, that was good. Okay. As far as sleeping, sleeping was, um, very difficult. Um, the first night he slept in the chair and I don't think he slept any, it was terrible. Thankfully we have, my husband and I, our beds are the, the kind that the back lowers and the feet raise is the adjustable bed. We bought it from Sam's Club. It's not anything fancy. But that ended up being a total lifesaver for him because he was able to, um, even the first couple of days, his daddy would have to help him swing his legs around. But he could put, he could get on the bed and then we could give him the remote um, and we would, he would get in the bed with the back raised and then he could lower the bed to his comfort and um, I bought him a neck pillow that went around his neck. I'll show you a picture of how he, how he would sleep. And that's how he slept the first four weeks. Um, well, until we went on our cruise. When we went on our cruise, we were, I was concerned. He was concerned too. Like, how's he going to sleep? Because he slept elevated the whole time. If you don't have a bed, this is a trick that we learned. Put a large pillow. You might need to go buy one of those big body pillows. But put a pillow underneath. You know, lots of pillows here. He likes to keep a pillow, even now, a pillow up under his elbow for the broken arm. Not, not jacking it way up, but just, just a little, just a little bitty bit of support right there um, under that elbow, and then also up under your knees um, if you're having to lay flat. Because laying completely flat is not is not comfortable to do that on that long. But if you're able to elevate your knees, that will help. Um, and that's how he's been sleeping now the past several nights. He's able to get back to his own bed. 
and I'm not sleep elevated. But if you have a bed that's elevated, that would be ideal. If not, I do recommend the pillow underneath the knees. Um, sitting, as far as sitting, it's very important even, you know, until that bone becomes solid. Um, sitting and standing that you keep the shoulders back to keep that bone pulled back to help those bones to get aligned. So while they're becoming more solid, um, you know, you've got them pulled back properly. Um, also too, one thing we didn't realize, but even, even if you're sitting, like we have a rocking chair that, um, one of those glider rocking chairs, um, I'll show you a picture of that. Like he doesn't even, my aunt, I was asking her about it and she said he doesn't even need to prop it on the armrest because that's bringing that bone up a little bit and you don't want that. It's got to be in a natural position and the sling has got to hold it in. So don't even prop your elbow on anything. While he was at school, he would take a note, his like one of his notepads and he would hold it down in his lap and thankfully he was able to write um, with his right hand um, there in his lap to do his score so he wouldn't get super far behind. Um, medications, his daughter did per prescribe, I believe it was hydrocodone. Not very many pills, we only took two of those. He told him not to take many of those and then he's been on Mobic since then to help with pain and then I was able to give him some Tylenol if needed throughout that but now um, he actually he is not taking any pain medicine um, he didn't take any this morning he's trying to come off of it completely so um, yeah if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comments I will be happy to answer them again informational purposes video video only but if you are going through this as a parent, I fully relate with you and how you feel and the concern that you have and the way that your heart hurts for your child because it truly is one of the most unpleasant things to see your child hurt. And um, so, and then we even dealt with people telling us that he was going to have to have surgery. Um, multiple people said, oh, you're going to have to have surgery. You can't, that's not going to work. And even hearing that, that negative um, opinion, even though people were well-meaning and they were doing it out of love and concern, um, I kept telling them, you know, we trust the Lord first and foremost, and then, you know, we're seeing a specialist in shoulders, and, you know, we're going to go with what they said, and in my head, I'm thinking, and what do you, what do you know about shoulders? But I didn't say that out loud. I just thought it. So anyway, I will see you in four weeks approximately, and I will let you know what we find out then. See you soon. We're out here in the yard, and they know I'm filming, but I'm talking anyway. Um, you can see Clay in the gray shirt. He's waving. Hey. <laughs> um, I told him that I wanted him to come out here and throw. And that was with his right hand. That was with the um, arm that he broke his collarbone. Today is June 1st. March 7th was the day that he broke his collarbone. And the doctor said that when you get to three months, this is what we learned in our last report. He said when you get to three months that you can basically do whatever you want to do. And so um, last weekend he actually um, threw the football for the first time. He's just being careful. He does still complain some with... Um, pain when he wakes up from sleeping but overall he's doing really well he has his full range of motion and um you know he's still he doesn't need to go out to football practice yet um but overall he's doing great so we're really thankful he didn't need surgery he was able to heal on his own without that if you have any questions if you're going through this with your child feel free to or someone you love um feel free to post those questions i'll be glad to answer you um, any questions? <clears throat> he was a pediatric case. If you are um, have questions about an adult case, I certainly may not have an answer for those. But just the general care questions, I'll be happy to help you with that. And remember, this is not medical advice. This is just informative purposes, what we did and how we got through this season in our life where we dealt with a broken collarbone. So um, certainly not fun, but definitely something that can be overcome. So um 
Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, please give my video a like. Feel free to share it and post a comment. And please like my channel. You never know what kind of video I may put up here for you to watch that I hope will be helpful to you. We'll see you next time. Bye.